I often get a question of how do I sign my paintings? Now let's take a look at that. The, the last person to ask me this question uh, was one of our virtual students who is working on our full-length videos. And so he emailed me and asked, um, how, sh how should the signature of the painting be done? Where is the right place for the signature? What is the hue value and saturation of the signature? And should the signature be with or without a date? Now those are important questions. One thing I want to emphasize to you about signing your paintings is that you don't want that signature to be so blatant that that's the first thing that anybody sees when they look at your painting. Anytime I am asked to judge an art show, if when I look at the painting for the first time, if, my, if the first thing that hits me in the face is a signature, that painting is not going to get any recognition from me in the show because it shows me that the artist has not been sensitive uh, to the painting and to the, how the signature should fit in the painting itself. So let's take a look. What do you consider when signing your paintings? Well, the first thing you want to consider is that you don't want that signature to be anything more than a part of the composition of the painting. It shouldn't, it shouldn't claim a space, and yet it should be strong enough so that the viewers can read it. Um, so there's the first thing, and, and as to the, the value, the color, and the intensity, take that from the painting itself. Whatever, when you put the signature in an area, uh, choose a color and a value that is harmonious with that area in which you sign. So if the area, say, um, I'm just using these, these rectangles here as kind of little placemats for us to work, if the area of your painting, uh, say in, in the area where you put your signature, is dark, then you'll want that your signature to be a little lighter value, not extremely light because you don't want to jump out like a sore thumb, but you'll want your signature to be a little bit of a lighter value, uh, and you'll want it to be in the same color range as that area in which you sign. So there's the first and probably most important thing is to allow the signature to fit in with the composition of the painting. Now where? Some artists sign their paintings on the lower right. Some sign their paintings on the lower left. Some sign their paintings in other places which I don't care for because I think that the painting itself should be the subject. And so when I, if I see a signature sprawled, in any other location other than in the lower right or the lower left, it kind of it's, I find it disturbing. That may be my personal preference, but I think if you look at the paintings in history, uh, or done by the historical masters, you'll find you won't find that kind of, of um, kind of smarty pants that I think of. So don't try to be a smarty pants with your signature. Um, and then then as to where. Actually, it, in, in our Western culture, it feels better to have the signature on the lower left if it will fit there without causing any kind of uh, compositional conflict with your painting. Sometimes there'll be some important things going on in the lower left that a signature would distract from. In that case, do a switcheroo, put your signature on the lower, I uh, call it lower left, I meant lower right, lower right here put the signature on the other side, but keep it low enough so that it doesn't distract. If you are a very, very bold person, you have a very, very bold signature, kind of pull back on that when you sign your painting. You don't want it sprawled all over the place. So pull back on the and allow the painting to, to be the first thing that people see, as I said earlier. Now, what kind of signature? If you can, be consistent with your signature throughout your entire painting career. Because people will look at a signature, they will recognize it just like, like they recognize your regular signature when you sign a check or something. So keep whatever signature you use, keep it consistent. Now I like using my regular handwriting when I can uh, for my signature. Uh, some people, like Richard Schmidt, has a kind of a trademark signature. 
that he's worked out very, very early in his career. And that, when you see that signature, you know that's Richard Schmidt. So be consistent. One thing that I like to see in a signature is both names, or your first name and your last name. Now, again, referring back to Richard Schmidt, he only signed his painting Schmidt. Well, he happened to make it big, and so when we see Schmidt, we know that's Richard Schmidt. But I like having both names, so that's my personal preference. But you need to make a choice and be consistent about that. If you're using only your last name, well then be consistent with that. Uh, if you're using your initial and your last name, be consistent with that. If you leave, use your full name, be consistent. So being consistent from one painting to the other throughout your career is an important thing uh, with your signature. Okay, with or without date. Um, this, is a, this is another one that's kind of been a controversial uh, point throughout, a, throughout, well, for a long, long time recently at least. Um, not all historical paintings or not hi all historical masters have put the date and sometimes that, uh, the date of the painting, sometimes that will cause um, curators a problem if they're trying to do a retrospective show. I think it, it's important to have the date of um, the painting because it gives the viewer a reference and it gives uh, everybody else, gives the artist even a reference uh, as to when the painting was done and how it fits into the entire uh, work, the entire journey of work that the artist has done throughout their life. There is this argument, you see I'm not doing much here, this is more talking to you than it is demonstrating to you, but there is this argument that if you put the date it makes the painting antiquated. That is a foul argument, it's a spurious argument. Paintings don't get old. Uh, paintings have have a life lifeless or what would you say a an eternity kind of of their own. A, a painting is a statement, is a work of art. It does not age, and so that argument that an uh, that an older day indicates an older older inventory that is made for the market for the mass produced market. That has nothing to do with artists and nothing to do with the way artists um, uh, produce their work. So. Forget that one if you care about your work as an artwork and not just as a mass-produced um, inventory, then you'll want to, oh, you want to honor that. So I like the date and, and so what I will end up doing uh, at the bottom of my painting, I usually will go on the lower right and I will use my regular signature and right underneath it I will put the date just like that. And, and then that tells the viewer of what they need to know about when that painting was done and it shows my signature as my way of claiming my work. So, have I answered this? Uh, the hue, value, and saturation, that has to do, of course, with whatever colors you're using in your painting. Um, the right place for the signature, talked about that extensively, with or without date. With or without date is really your choice. It's how much do you want people to know about when the work was done? So that's your choice. My preference is to have the date there. If you choose not to have the date, just be consistent with that. So if you found this quick tip helpful, um, if you have something that you have a question about and you'd like for me to address it, uh, put, put your question down in the comments section and we'll put it on our schedule. And don't forget we have those full length videos that are full tutorials on various, various uh, composing topics. So check those out at dianemise.com. And there's your quick tip.